You ready for God's Word today? Yes. Amen. If you have a Bible, I'm going to have you turn in the Scriptures to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 12. I want you to know that meeting in here today, uh, God's presence has been inspiring for me. In fact, when people ask me how the church is going, I'm going to tell them that it's almost packed. <laughs> <laughs> and that people have to come early to find a seat. So that's <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, a man named Rodney King died. It was in 1991, March. He was driving his vehicle, a construction worker he was in uh, Los Angeles. Was pulled over by the police, and before he knew it, he had about six or seven policemen around him. There was some altercation. He was on the ground, and police officers kept hitting him, even though he wasn't, he wasn't resisting them. He happened to be African American. Someone in the sidelines videotaped it, sent it out on national television, created a great stir. Three of the police officers were beating on him, and about three or four were just standing around watching. They had the trial, and it was the next year, 1992, when the jury acquitted or set free all of them except one with the par parole. There were riots in Los Angeles, and over 53, 53 people were killed and died because of those riots. In the midst of the rioting, Rodney King got on the air, and he asked this question, for which he is famous. Simple question. Can we all just get along? What a great question. Can we all just get along? You know, saying get along is a lot easier than getting along. Why is it so hard for us to have peace with each other? Now, blame it on the heat if you want to, but this week it seems like everywhere I go, people seem to be like, anger level seems to be right at the brim of the cup. And every time you just bump them, it seems like stuff happens and boils over. I went down to the gas station the other day and I had to wait to go in and pay because a person that felt disrespected was picking a fight with a person that was behind the counter. So I thought, well, I'll wait. Because I mean, it was like, it was just on the verge of a fist fight. I'm thinking to myself, Okay, how do we do this? This getting along stuff. Now, if you saw a person who was disabled and was in a wheelchair, and you just walked up to them and said, why did you start walking? Well, that's pretty rude, well, don't you think? <laughs> they would need more than just saying, hey, do something about your condition. And the world needs more than just for us to say to each other, come on now, you know, get, get along, we can do this. We need more. We need the healing of God. And we need to have the wisdom of God mm -hmm. to know how to get along with one another. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, in the Scriptures, spoke about how we can get along. And let's read what he has to say, because it is powerful. Romans chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Okay? So why don't you read together with me, alright? Let's all put our voices together. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends. But leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, 
you will meet burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Read verse 21 again with me. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Can you say amen at the reading of the word? Amen. All right. How do we live in peace? Because God's will is for us to enjoy relationships with each other. Not for us to duck and hide so we don't kill each other. It's His will that we enjoy relationships. Okay? So, what we have to be willing to do is we have to be willing to go after God's peace. It's not just going to be automatic. It's not just going to be easy. We have to go after God's peace if we're going to understand right relationships with each other. So, the question comes... What can we do to experience peaceful and healthy relationships? All right, let's take a look at the Word of God. <coughs> Asking ourselves, why can't we all just get along? Here's the first thing. We see in the Bible that if we're going to have peace with each other, we have to be at peace with God. Amen. Because if we don't have peace in our own heart, then that restlessness and that anger is going to spill out on everybody else. So the only way that we can really get along with each other is to first get along with God. Without God, there is no real peace. What's the problem? Why aren't we at peace with God? It's not His issue. It's our issue. I'm reading the book of Jeremiah in my devotions. And Jeremiah lived in a nation that slipped further and further and further away, ignoring God, doing their own thing. The land starts to get filled with immorality and violence and all kinds of problems. And Jeremiah uses this expression. God says of the people, the stubbornness of your heart. That's the problem. And oftentimes, the scripture uses the phrase, the stubbornness of your evil heart. So, the problem in relationships begins in our own heart. Amen. And how stubborn that we can be. Amen. So, to have right relationships with people means that we have to be in right relationship with God. Dealing with the stubbornness of our own nature. The Bible says that we, by nature, are at war with God. There's something inside every one of us that says to God in our fleshly nature, God, I don't want to bow my knee to you. I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to obey you. There's something inside of us. And so God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, reaching out, one hand toward God, reaching out the other hand toward us. As Timothy says, he is the mediator between God and man. This Jesus Christ. He became the peace between God and us. And so, if we surrender our stubborn heart and we ask God for forgiveness, then he blesses us by forgiveness and by his presence. Amen. The scripture puts it this way. That there is no peace for the wicked. I remember when I first read that, I thought, well, I'm not wicked. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing a, a serial killer with blood dripping off his face. <laughs> you know, no, I'm not wicked. But you know what wickedness is in the Bible? Wickedness is simply a person who doesn't follow and obey God. There's a lot of nice, wicked people around. Amen. You know, we say that a lot in Maine, wicked. <laughs> Well, we're all wicked. There's not this, this group over here that's so good and this group over here that's so bad. No, we're, we all need God. God takes the wickedness and He takes and forgives us and He makes us His children. Amen. But if we disobey God and we live our own life, we have no peace. There's no peace. And so what does God say? Submit and be at peace with Him from the book of Job. Yes, it is that simple. 
Submitting our lives to God is the beginning of the process of peace. I was talking to a man not too long ago, a man that people would envy because he owns so much and he has so much money. Anything he wants, he can buy. And I was talking to him and I said to him, I said, you know, if you knew the peace that I have in my heart, I was telling him, you would be begging God for, for help. And he said to me, he looked me right in the eye, he said, you know what? He said, you're right. He said, I don't have any peace. All kinds of money, everything in the world that he wants, but he has no peace. Because peace comes from God. Why can't we all get along? Because we don't have peace. But when we have peace with God, then we have the peace of God. Because when the presence of God comes in your life, then you understand that you can have tranquility. Amen. It doesn't mean everything goes right. It means Amen. that you have a peace that passes understanding. Amen. Even when things are going wrong, you have a power inside of you that holds it together. Amen. Here's what the Bible says. In fact, read it with me. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What does it say? Transcends all understanding. Sometimes we can't figure it out, but we know it's there. Amen. Why can't we all get along? Amen. We have to deal with our pride. And if you're sitting there and you say, why don't I have any pride? Then you've got to deal with your pride. <laughs> deal with it. The Bible says in Romans 12, 16, do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Because pride, the wrong kind of pride, pride is the source of strife. If you're in a marriage relationship and you have two proud people and they start an argument, nobody wants to lose. And so the argument goes like this. It gets a little bit bigger, the battle gets bigger, the war gets bigger, and you have World War III in your home. Right? Because we're proud and we don't want to say, you know what, I'm wrong. I'll never forget a meeting that we had with pastors. And there was a pastor that I didn't quite agree with his method of how he was doing things. And I remember in the meeting, I started questioning him on this method. And he gave me an answer, but it really wasn't like the answer that I wanted to hear. So I pushed it again, and he pushed back, and I pushed again. And I remember in that meeting, it get, the, the temperature was sort of like the outside. It started to get really hot. And then I, and I said, I don't know, and I backed off. But the Lord felt with me after that meeting. Because I thought, in my mind, I thought, hey, I'm right. That, that method is not the right way to do it, and I know how to do it, and I'm right to tell everybody else that this person is wrong. Well, you know... The Lord is a faithful parent. <laughs> Amen. And he knows how to get our attention. And I remember all that day, I'm just thinking to myself, well, Lord, I was right. But down deep inside, I knew the reason that I was opposing him was because of my pride. It really wasn't the method so much as it was, you know, me asserting myself. Rats. <clears throat> Busted again. <laughs> Stupid pride. Amen. So God dealt with me about this. I, I had to call the other pastor and talk to him and apologize. So pride is what gets at each other. So the best thing that I can do is what I tell myself, is learn to hate pride. Amen. Learn to hate it. Here's what the Bible says. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance evil behavior and perverse speech. Now, you can read this and you can say, you know what? Yeah, I do hate pride. In fact, when I see pride in this person, this person, this person, it makes me sick. I hate their pride. <laughs> it is so much easier to see the pride in others than it is to see it in ourselves. Amen. Amen. There's a person who said it so much better than me. We so easily excuse in uh, 
ourselves, thank you, <laughs> we so easily excuse in ourselves what we condemn in others. Oh, you know, I, I hate your pride, it stinks. But in me, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, God understands. I am who I am. You understand? That's just how we are. And so, if we're going to have peace, we have to deal with our pride. And we all said what? Amen. Amen. Yeah, we resound music, right? Okay. Why can't we all get along? Because we take revenge. The Bible clearly says, don't take revenge. Verse 17, read it with me. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Have you noticed any of the drama or action-oriented movies, or most of them, have a major theme of revenge? You notice that? Okay. Now that's not all wrong in the sense that we have a longing for justice. We want justice to be done. We don't want to leave a movie, you know, and the bad guys win. That's no fun. No, we want the bad guys to be brought to justice, right? Okay. But how was that done in the movies? You know, people do evil things, good people get hurt, but good people get strong. They work out, they run up the rocky steps, <laughs> and they get really powerful. And then they come and they blow away the bad people. Right? Isn't that the way most movies end? It's the revenge factor. <clears throat> Well, revenge works really good on an hour and a half movie. But revenge rarely ever works in real life. Amen. It just causes more and more complications and problems. Even whole nations revenge against each other for centuries. I was reading in the paper a real sad account a couple weeks ago. A guy that hired another person on a farm somewhere in, in Nebraska. I forget where it was. But he hired this other person. And they had other workers on the farm too. And uh, the guy, the, I guess the owner, discovered that one of the, the worker that he hired uh, had sexually assaulted his daughter, four years old. A terrible situation. And so this owner went to this worker and beat him up and beat him up and beat him up so much that he killed him. I mean, there's something inside of us that we can say we can understand, you know, that anger. But the problem is, is that because of his revenge, now this owner is facing many, many years in prison. You see, he got revenge, but in a real sense, nobody wins at all, right? I mean, he's the loser, the daughter's the loser, the guy dies the loser. You know, this is, everybody's a loser in revenge. So that's why God says for us that we are to give revenge to God. And we are also, right after this, the Bible says, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. So we're to pursue to do what's right. You know what our big problem is? We tend to want to be treated right and treated with respect, but we don't do so good on the doing the right part to others. We emphasize uh, <coughs> dignity and value, but we de-emphasize being people of honor. Amen. Does that make Amen. sense? Amen. Okay, let's just say I go around in my life, and I go around talking to myself and say, I'm a person of value, I'm a person of dignity. Well, that's true to a certain extent. But if that's all I focus on, and I do stupid stuff, and I hurt people along the way, and all this and that, and I, but I'm, I'm always saying to myself, I'm a person of value, and someone disrespects me, then hey, I'm a person of value, so I'm going to go ahead and dish you. You see what I'm saying? But if we go around saying to ourselves, I want to be an honorable person. Amen. I want to be a person who does what's right. Amen. Then, guess what happens? 
that we, have, we experience peace in our relationships with others. And when somebody disrespects us, we don't have to just lose all control because, as if our whole life is over because someone disrespected us. No, we say, you know what? Lord, that's in your hands. I'm going to go ahead and keep going on. Amen. 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 Because the reality is, is when we do right, we feel right. Amen. And if someone disrespects me and I work out my revenge, then I might emotionally feel good for a moment, but I don't feel right about it. Amen. I'm not right about it. Amen. So if we're going to get along with each other, then we have to leave revenge in the movies. Amen. And don't do it in real life. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in prison right now because of revenge. Why can't we all get along? Amen. Isn't that a good question? that Rodney King asked us. Take personal responsibility. If you're going to have peace in your relationships with others, take personal responsibility. It's not anybody else's fault. Okay? It starts right here. Here's what the Bible says. If it is possible, now, I'm not going to read it myself. You read it. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So the Bible recognizes that it's not going to be possible to live at peace with everyone. Amen. There are some people who are just plain going to hate you. No matter what reason. Maybe even because you try to do good. So Jesus even warned us that there will be people in life that will hate us simply because we love Him and we want to do what's right. Okay, so it's not always going to be possible, but we are what? We are to pursue peaceful relationships as far as it depends on... Right. What does the Bible say? Do not be overcome by what? Evil. But overcome evil with good. Now remember this, I'm almost done. Remember this. An enemy, quote, may just be a future friend of disguise. Okay. Some of the people that I'm really close to today were once I was tempted to be their enemies. I was praying and fasting about three weeks ago. I'm just seeking God for this church. I want to see the church just be a healthy church. We are to a certain extent, but we have a long way to go. Amen. I say that from, Amen. from me onward. Amen. But we, we want to grow. We want to be a place that, that just makes an impact. I, mean, I was praying. And the Lord put into my spirit the word attractive. That he wants us, the way that we're going to grow is He wants us to be an attractive body. That attraction takes outward attraction and inward attraction. Now, the outward attraction is more superficial. The outward attraction is that if our building looks like the paint is 300 years old, then we, we paint it, we scrape it, we paint it. If the bathrooms, if you walk in and you're just like overcome by odor and, and disarray, then we do we work on the bathroom. Right? Amen. Okay? So there's something about outward attraction. I mean, if you're, you know, engaged to somebody and they smell like a toxic waste dump, <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to enjoy the relationship. And the outward attraction has to change. Right? right? So there's something about that. That's why you're part of this church. If you see trash on the you know, carpet, pick it up. See something outside, you know, it needs to be straightened up, straightened it up. Right? We're all part of the church. So that attraction is real. But even greater than that is the attraction on the inside. If we as God's people here at Highway and Resurrection Life, if we have relationships that are quality, that we really love each other, that we're not like, you know, I don't want to go to church because I'm not talking to that person for a month. Mm -hmm. Or you know, I hope that they're not there. You know, you know what I'm saying? This undercurrents of this this yuck. Amen. You know, the undercurrents. But if we 
live in peace with each other, if we have godly relationships with each other, that's what the world is crying for. Amen. Because they don't have that at work. They don't even have that at home. Amen. Because they're fighting at home, they're cursing each other, you know what I'm saying? Amen. All around us. That's just the way of the world. But if we can be different, if we can be attractive because of the peace of God and being in peace with God, then that's a way for the church to really grow. Amen. Amen. Yes. So why can't we all get along? Right? Amen. We can do this. Amen. With the help of God and being willing to love each other.